All right. Hi, Ingrid. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, as you know, I was just telling you about my whole campaign, my Mouth Breathing Awareness Month, and I've gotten to know you pretty well. I know your family is basically done with therapy with me, but you found me kind of in the midst of your journey to figuring out a lot of this stuff with your kids and yourself. Um, and I know you're also in the medical field, so I'd love it if you could just kind of tell me and everyone else. Um, what what's your background? I know you're a nurse, but you're very specialized. So tell us a little bit about that. Uh, yes. So I, I was a critical care nurse for probably eight years, and then I went to nurse anesthesia school at USC. So I have a master's degree in nurse anesthesia. Um, currently, it's a PhD program right now. If anyone wants to become a nurse anesthetist, they can. Awesome. Um, essentially, I do... Um, all different types of anesthesia. So I'm very aware of the airway. I do sedation. I intubate patients. And so sort of just by that and also working in critical care, I'm, you know, aware of, uh, you know, oxygenation, sleep apnea, usually the kind of patients that I see. The interesting part was when I met you and then you had asked me, you know, did I know about UARS, upper airway yeah. respiratory because the typical patient you think of, or we think of with sleep apnea, is your typical morbidly obese guy, fat, thick, Old. and you know, you see him and you're like, oh, he has sleep apnea. Like a 10 year old can tell he has sleep apnea, but you don't think of, and there are, so all, are thin people with sleep apnea, but it's usually like the central sleep apnea, like within their brain that's causing the problem. But you know, even myself, I would say my upper body is more thin, but then I had sleep apnea when I got tested because my airway, you know, yeah. with CT. and same with my son, who's 5'11", 140 pounds, he'll never be that thin. What, how could he possibly have sleep apnea? Like, you'll never be this skinny in your life again. Yeah. So he told me about the book Gas which was sort of a primer on upper airway resistant syndrome. So you don't literally have to have a BMI of, you know, 50 to have yeah. sleep apnea. Did you find that book gasp and then it led you to the myofunctional therapy or how did you kind of get down the track of, of finding me and looking into this stuff? Okay. So uh, serendipitously, I was at the pediatric dentist with my little daughter and I was complaining to the dentist because I complain about whatever, whoever I can. And I said, no, I was just there for her. And I'm like, I'm so mad that my son is getting braces. I'm mad. He's like breastfed for like three and a half years. Never took a bottle, never took a pacifier. You know, and you know what else? His breath, his breath is so bad in the morning. And then the dentist looked at me and goes, is he a mouth breather? And I said, what? I, I don't know. I may, yeah. maybe. And he's like, hmm, yeah, maybe he should see an orofacial biologist. And I said, I don't know, whatever, that's fine. So as soon as I got home, I saw the son in the hallway and I said, hey, hey, listen, here, shut your mouth and breathe through your nose. And he went, I don't like to do that. Right yeah. away, popped his mouth open. And I said, what? This is, this is crazy. So I called back the dentist. I said, give me the name of this gal. I'm going to call her. So anyhow, I called a gal who was close to me and she was super busy. She couldn't see me for like a month and a half. And she was also wanted $450 for her assessment, but that's beside the point. She was very thorough. She wanted me to take a sleep video of him at 10 o'clock, two o'clock, four o'clock, but she was super busy. And she said, I'll tell you what, I got like 20, a minute before my next client, have your, give me a video of your kid saying this and that. I'm going to tell you if you have a problem or not. And then you can either not bother. So we said a couple of things and she's like, oh yeah, he has a problem. He's tongue tied. So I'm like, I cannot wait a month to see this lady. I got to do something else. So then I Googled oral facial myologist and that's how I found Sarah. And I was like, I can't wait a month. Boom, Sarah. And then she, um, you know, looked at Dieter and said, yes. Yeah, we met pretty, I mean, I, I feel like it was almost two years ago now, but I don't, I don't know how long it's been. <laughs> maybe about a year and a half ago it was like right around September we literally had just like started school it was like maybe very early September and as soon as the dentist told me that I called got that figured out and then you assessed him then you looked at my daughter and they were both tongue-tied as babies both clipped 
big help oh, I that. I forgotten one. that. So both of them actually, them they tongue had tongue. their tongue tie release previously. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I paid for that already. So, well, she was done kind of. And then looking at my husband, I knew, and he did not want to come for the therapy. I told him to come on over here. He said he didn't need any help. He didn't need, <laughs> he didn't need to talk to anybody. But he was tongue tied. I and think when we looked at him, he was the most tongue tied. Him and the daughter were the most tongue tied. But oddly enough, they had a fairly U-shaped palate. Mm -hmm. Like my yeah. husband has perfect teeth and never had braces and was bottle fed, which I have no idea how that happened. Yeah. Yeah, and I remember during the evaluation kind of asking you, like, what do you think? Because I was looking at, like, you've got similar structures to mine. And I was like, do you think your tongue is in your palate? Do you think you're tongue tied? And then I think, did that get you kind of paying attention to your own stuff? or? Well, what happened with me was, so I definitely knew when you said, where was your tongue? I said, it's at the bottom of my mouth. My mouth. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, what's the mm -hmm. problem with that? You know, and I kind of knew that I was breathing through my mouth at night because I would have water by my bed and I'd always mm -hmm. be putting this on and you just wake up. And every time I go to the dentist, they're like, oh, you're a plaque builder. You're just a plaque builder. <laughs> and the husband and I would go at the same time. I'm like, how's his teeth? They're like, great. They're fine. They're perfect. So that was kind of weird. Crazy. And I was a grinder too, mm -hmm. which I kind of knew that. And so what happened was I wasn't, I mean, I knew that my tongue was in the right spot. So then I took the kids to Dr. Zoggy and they, he scoped them and he, and then he told, he said, guess who else is tongue tied? I said, I don't know because I could stick my tongue out far. I really don't know what he's talking about. And he said, me. <laughs> and I didn't even bring my husband to that appointment because we already knew he was tongue tied. So the entire family had to have a tongue tie release. Yeah, and, of course, a lot of therapy. And yeah, we had gone through, um, and I, I, I can't remember what stage this was. I'm pretty sure I sent you to Dr. Zoggy, or did you hear about him through somewhere else? That myofa, the gal near me, the orofacial myologist, uh, okay. she told me about him. And I actually tried to go to someone cheaper because I called her back and I said, well, I was kind of thinking maybe I'll just go to some dentist. I'll just do it with laser and maybe it'll be covered. And so I called her and she said, to be honest with you, Don't we're not worry. sending, we're only sending people to him because yeah. other people, it hasn't been. And so I said, you know what? I'm just, cause I had to pay cash because I'm a Kaiser patient. So, which is an HMO. So I didn't have blue cross. So I just said, you know, what? I'm just going to pay the cash and just do yeah. it. Right. So you had the tongue tie stuff going on. You noticed the mouth breathing, um, the sleep apnea stuff I know came later. Um, you had a lot of the orthodontic problems to solve first though so walk yeah. me through that stuff because i know when we first met did Dieter have braces yeah he had had he had braces on we had went to a traditional orthodontist and then i read was on the internet and i looked at all the dr hang stuff and he said you know braces are bad braces are retractive and he had literally had them on for four months so i t got the wire taken off i went in and said he had to get it taken off until i could see him he was like so he just had brackets on his teeth with no wire, which was kind of weird because I'm like, we got to hold this until we find out what's going on. Um, he had saw Dieter since he was five years old, never did anything about his palate getting narrower, never said he was a mouth breather, never said, let's do a cone beam CT. No. And I think, you know, that's more common. Um, you're lucky. I mean, being in Southern California, you have so many doctors around who are actually looking at this stuff, but I think for most parents and most orthodontists, the, the mainstream normal thing is um, to not really look at the mouth breathing and the tongue and, um, you know, is the tongue in the palate, basically. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And, and the sad thing was I had not got his compilation of pictures, which is what they do every time you go to the orthodontist, they take pictures, mm -hmm. until I go see Dr. Zoggy. So I thought maybe I should get these together. And as I'm looking at them, I'm like, Oh my God, he's just changed. Like he's changed, and people are like, you know, this would be such an easy lawsuit. Like, look at this. There's the changes. It's sort of like just watching it happen. And um, so then, when I had the meeting with him to get the braces off, it was not very pleasant. And luckily enough, I work with surgeons, so he doesn't really intimidate me. I, I've yelled at surgeons before, so he's not going to impress me. And he said things like, "Oh yeah, you know, he's a vertical grower." I'm like, "Okay, great. Why did you just say that? Why are you talking about it?" And, you know, we talked about palate expansion. I go, they've been doing this since the 1920s. Why do you act like it's brand new? Like, if, mm. like, honestly, you should have done this at seven years old. Now we're at the cusp of 12 years old. So yeah. had that taken off. So then I started seeing all the doctors here. Dr. Hang saw him. And he was more into the um, 
he really didn't want to do too much because he was 12 years old. So then I read another book. Um, what was it called? The three foot or six foot tiger, three foot cage, that one. Cage, right? Which is your large, this tongue in this mouth and this cage is too small. Mm -hmm. And it was the DNA appliance. So then both of us got the DNA appliance, which is a hard one because of course it depends on you wearing it, you know? Yeah. And also, we also started mouth taping as soon as we saw you because I looked up on the internet. And you talked about that was great because Dieter's grown seven inches since taping his mouth. That's so amazing. Yeah, he did. He got that growth spurt. And I yeah. can only guess, I mean, we're just guessing here, but um, if you're sleeping better and breathing better, you will oh, yeah. grow better, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I remembered when I first read about like this breathing through your nose and this taping, especially since I'm in medicine, it said like you produce nitric oxide in your paranasal sinuses. And I'm like, I, I didn't even believe that. So I, I, you know, put it in Google. It's like, mm -hmm. it actually is where you produce nitric oxide. <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> Never breathe through your nose. Cause it's hard to breathe through your nose. Then you're not okay. having that. Yeah. And same with like sort of the growth hormone and how your face grows and all the rest of it. So yeah. he actually never sleep with his mouth, not taped. That would I really, he's very mad if he ever had to do it. Like if you ever got a cold, which he's gotten a lot less cold. Yeah. He'd go, oh, I feel so terrible. My mouth is so dry. This is horrible. Yeah. If you get used to mouth taping yeah. and you get used to how well you sleep and then you don't do it, you do feel different. I mean, I noticed yeah. that too. So it's impressive because how old is he now? He just, he like 14 and three months. Yeah. So, I mean, oh, to be now. that age and already aware of the stuff, I think he's, he's so, so much further ahead than like I was at 14 or maybe you, you know? So yeah. I think, you know, even though he didn't get the orthodontic stuff started as early as we would have liked, uh, at least he's on the right path now. Yeah. Yeah. So that was good. So, and he's not embarrassed about it with his friends. Uh, uh, he tells his friends to tape their mouth. And he also knows that if he didn't tape his mouth, he would snore. So his friends would know that if he had a sleepover, they'd say, Dieter, tape your mouth. So he, he absolutely does it. He's told a lot of his friends about it. So I don't know what the parents are thinking. They're probably thinking, what is going on with their house? <laughs> and I was actually just talking to ENT surgeons today. We were doing thyroidectomy and I was saying taping and they're like, what? You tape your mouth? I'm like, with what? I go, this hypo, this tape right here, this paper tape. And they're like, yeah. Oh. And it's kind of crazy. And, but yeah. I, guys, just Google people taping their mouth on the internet and you'll find all sorts of people taping their mouth. Yeah. And it's, it is, I mean, it, it, I think you do get sick less. Um, mm -hmm. I've noticed that myself, if I, um, breathe through my mouth at night, then I think you're just so susceptible to colds. And I've heard the theory that it's, it has to do with the humidity. Like if you're, if your tissues dry out, now you're more susceptible to the bacteria that's actually already in your sinuses and your nose and all these areas. Cause we actually do have a natural flora of bacteria. And if that dries out and then also you're not cleaning and filtering the air as you breathe it in. Um, I've kind of heard there's like that double whammy that goes on. Okay. And I mean, and then your saliva, cause I yeah. mean, your only, your mouth is only as good as your saliva. And then, you know, wait. And also another thing is too, that, since I've been trained, you know, because I noticed when I drink and all the rest of it, I had a reverse swallow. Mm -hmm. I guess we all did. Um, is it, I used to have lip gloss kind of stashed everywhere, right? Because your lips are dry, right? So there'd be like some lip gloss in the car, there'd be some lip gloss here. And now it's like, I don't even use lip gloss. Like I'll put yeah. lipstick on to look good, but it's not like I'm constantly like, oh man, I need the lip gloss because. Yeah, if you're mouth breathing, your lips will dry out so much yeah. more. <laughs> but, I mean, Certainly, especially when we were doing the exercises, I mean, it was kind of crazy. I remember just like, oh my God, my mouth's open, like underneath there, you know, because I wear a mask at work all day and I'm just like, oh, my mouth's hanging open. Like, <laughs> it was crazy, you know? I know. Um, it's so subconscious. You don't notice you're doing it until like when I work with people and, and I start, I ask them and, and you know, you remember the therapy. I'm always asking, how often do you think your mouth was open? How often do you think you're breathing through your mouth? And it really starts to get into your subconscious eventually yeah. and then you can change the habit, but it takes a lot of practice. And I think, yeah. especially if you've been doing it for decades, it's yeah. hard to change that habit. So, and the, and the part about, even if your mouth is open just a little, mm -hmm. you keep doing it. And so, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of hard in a family because you're trying to correct people, but then you don't want to nag them too much. Exactly. They don't even tell me, they'll be like, mom, your mouth's open. I'm like, Oh, what? Come on, just relax. And just, 
And I just, he just let me sit here and enjoy my coffee. And I'm like, relax for a second. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. Got it. You know? So, yeah. Yeah. Well, good. Um, I mean, you shared a ton. Can you think of, oh, I guess we haven't really connected. When did you go down the sleep test path? Because one of the things I always talk about is mouth breathing eventually leads to some sort of sleep disordered breathing. So it has to do with our structures, not quite developing and forming correctly, but also our soft tissues being like weak and flabby, right. I guess, and falling into our airway at night. So yeah. um, when so did you guys start to... So I got the tongue, well, so I did the exercises, got the tongue tie. I was kind of hoping, you know, maybe that'll be it. I didn't really know I snored. Thankfully, my husband didn't tell me, which is kind of bad because it can kill you. So anyhow, I said, do I snore? He said, yeah. I said, well, I said it didn't bother him that much, which is crazy because my husband does not snore. So before I got the DNA appliance, I figured, well, Dr. Lockhart said, you know, get a sleep test, right? Because we want to kind of see before and after. So I got a sleep test, just a home one. And um, yeah, I had mild sleep apnea that was obviously worse on my back, which according to me, I never slept on my back because I mm -hmm. hate feeling because um, I felt like I wouldn't feel good. So I was always like a fetal sleeper, right? You know, this side or that side. Um, I went through a lot of, even with my mouth taped, I think I did the study with my mouth taped and I still had apnea. So it's obviously like more of like a structural problem, you know, like yeah. it's still the airway is too small. Um, do you feel like you're able to keep your tongue up all night at this point? Do you feel like your tongue stays in your palate while you sleep? I, I do because that the appliance that I wear has that little line. And mm. so when I look at my tongue in the morning, there's like a line. So it's been sucked up on the palate Good. and then also my teeth. But my, pa I mean, I'm still not wide enough when I put my tongue up there all the time. I still have what's that called? The crenulation. Oh, the, the scalloping. Like, scalloping yeah, on the tongue. Have, right. So Arden can put her tongue up there you know, for two minutes, Dieter could, and when they would stick their tongue out, they wouldn't have that on their tongue. Yeah. So, it does have to do with having a narrow palate and the, you know, the suboptimal structures, right? Right. <laughs> so I kind of opted for the appliance versus the Tharpy, where they would have, like, sawed up the palate and then just, like, cranked it. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, I know. I'm probably a year and a half into it, and I've got, I don't know if I'll ever get wide enough to have that, because when I look at Dieter's and mine, because I've got our two, um, you know, our molds, yeah. he, his mouth is way bigger than mine. So. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, if you have a wide palate and a big mouth, now your tongue can fill up that space. There's lots of room for your tongue. But if you've got a narrow palate, less space, now your tongue, volume-wise, it has to go somewhere. So it's going to start impinging on the airway or it's going to try to push forward. <laughs> Get your teeth, you know, push against your teeth. That's all right. Your your doggies, they're oh, good. Oh, we have poodles. I love them. Well, sorry about that. That's okay. Um, it's so a very candid interview. <laughs> that's all right. I can always edit some of this stuff okay, out good, so, good. if we have to. <laughs> um, what uh, I guess let's go into um, if you had to, as a parent, and then also as a very knowledgeable healthcare provider what would you recommend to other people when it comes to this stuff? You know, what would be your, after going through so much, what would be your advice that you would tell other people? Um, I would just say, I definitely get assessed because I have told other people who, of course, I noticed they had a problem. I can tell when they're swallowing. <laughs> I know you haven't had any problems like telling your friends that you think they're tongue tied. I remember yeah, you. And I would like assess them like, come here. Oh, oh my God, you're so tongue tied. And they're like, <laughs> Really? And then, because it's so bizarre to me, like if somebody said, hey, you have knock knees, you should see an orthopedic surgeon, I'd say, oh my God, do I? But these people are just sort of like, oh, like it's like I said, oh, you know, you got your ear, you know, you have three piercings to yours. It's not, I'm not just commenting on it. I'm like, I can't believe you're not going to get it checked out, you know? So I would say, I, I mean, especially, and I've told people, I go, why don't you go to Sarah's site? She'll give you a free assessment. Now, yeah. If, you know, maybe I understand not putting out $450 and going to someone and they go, you know what? You're great. You're fine. No problem. But if you can get a free assessment, why wouldn't you do it? Why wouldn't you find out? And it's also not radical because it's not like you're saying you need to have surgery. You're like, yeah. I mean, you might have minor surgery. All our surgery was done under local. Yeah. The tongue tie. It's a very minor. Doggy, but had we went to Kaiser, they would have put us 
put my kids to sleep. And I'm like, we're not having general anesthesia for this. Yeah. And it's a functional frenuloplasty, what he's doing, which I really like right. because he wants to see that you can suction your tongue and then he releases right. some, and then he has you suction. And if you're just under general anesthetic, you have no control, you know, yeah. everything's just limp. And I mean, there's risk to general anesthesia. And if you don't need it, it's like, there's many mm -hmm. surgeries you can have. You can have your eyes done under, not under general. Okay. You know, people don't like to think of it, but you don't need to do it. That's so right. his was done like that. And also he was like, you know, our tongues had to be strong enough or he would have canceled us. Cause I remember yeah. being really paranoid. I was like, do we need I know that? we worked, we prepared you. <laughs> got there and I'm like, Oh no, we we all took the day off. We're coming down. We're all getting it done one right after the other. Mm -hmm. It's going down today. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, because it's only going to potentially get worse. You know what I mean? Especially like, so when I, even when I had taken Dieter later to see an ENT, I was like, well, I just don't even understand how he could even possibly need these things. And he goes, well, look, at, he's young. He's 14. He's not 30. He's not overweight right now. His muscle isn't laxing. So if it isn't taken care of now, you yeah. know, you're the best you can be at 14, but translate that to 34. What if you, you know, have a BMI of 28 at 34? It could, it could be that little tiny bit of extra weight that just whoop, tips you over the scale. Yep, exactly. And, and that's went, what people don't realize so much of this stuff. It doesn't go away. It just gets worse as yeah. you age, unfortunately, you know? So if you have a tongue tie today and you're like, oh, I'm fine. It doesn't bother me. I sleep fine. I sleep great. Um, Maybe you won't in five or 10 years. We don't know. Um, if you're mouth breathing today, uh, chances are, I mean, you're going to have issues later. Um, oh, you yeah. feel fine. And the thing is, some people don't realize that they don't feel fine. They think they do because right. that's their like normal. But once they start sleeping and breathing better, now they're shocked. They're like, whoa, I did not realize how tired I actually was before. So I think that's another common thing is people just think they're fine because that's what they're used to. So, yeah, just one moment. Already turn that down. Um, also, I would say for people to just ask their doctor for a sleep apnea test because, believe it or not, they're usually pretty good about it. So, we were seeing like an allergist for Dieter, and I was like, hey, uh, I think you should have a sleep apnea test. Okay, for sure. And they just ordered one, which I was surprised. Yeah, that is, I mean, that's a good thing. Your actual data. And which we were shocked to find out he had sleep apnea. I actually really could not. I really thought it would come back negative. So I was pretty shocked. <laughs> I know. I was really surprised too after he had done so much stuff too. Yeah. I remember talking to you and we were we were both pretty like, what do we do now? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? Well, now he's going into another expansion technique. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah, because we're going to do the F-A-G-G-A, -G -G -A, the fixed anterior growth. Ah, uh, yeah, that I'll have to talk with you more about that later. And like, so yeah. that one, so, mm -hmm. yeah, it's like an a ongoing drama. I'm still in the DNA, so we'll see. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, I mean, I think for, for most people, like, the moral of the story is these things, they seem so little, like, who cares? Like, you were saying your friends are like, okay, I'm tongue-tied, like, so I should fix it. Um, right. If you mouth breathe, if you're tongue-tied, if you have any of these myofunctional things and you don't do anything about it, um, you know, it is, it, they don't go away. Like I said before. Um, <laughs> so it seems so simple, but it's actually a really big deal um, for a lot of people. So and especially for women, cause obviously we're concerned about beauty, but I remembered when I told my friend about it and then I said, you know what? I can't believe this. Like I have a reverse swallow. And she was said to me, she said, yeah, when I would be at your house and you would have coffee and you would drink and you go, I guess she goes, I thought you just did it because you like really liked your coffee. And I'm like, what? That's how I was doing it. And so, so I didn't know that when you swallowed, your face was like the Mona Lisa, like nothing has to move, right? It just, yeah, you shouldn't be, yeah. If you swallow correctly, you don't really think about it. People, mm -hmm. you know, it's like people who have straight teeth, they don't obsess about their teeth or whatever, their tongue's in the right place. And Mm -hmm. When I'll have a party, I'll ask people and I'll look at people with straight teeth and I'll say, where's your tongue? And they're like, it's on the roof of my mouth. <laughs> and somebody else. And they're like, it's on the bottom. And I'm like, well, she's actually right. And she's just lucky. It just happens to be good for her. And that's the way she is. And then other people are like, oh, okay. Yeah. 
I, know. I, <laughs> I have that happen too. I was at a party with some friends and um, friends of my parents and stuff like that. And a lot of people were, I would say, in their 50s and older, which is kind of the age group when people start to get diagnosed with sleep apnea. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chances are they've had it for a lot longer. But um, that's when like it gets bad enough that people actually start to talk to their doctor. So there's Dieter speaking of him. Dieter. <laughs> He, uh, he, he doesn't a lot of personality it. still. There you go. <laughs> um, so everyone was asking me and they're like, so what, you know, it, it is people kind of like, they want to know, um, at least for me, maybe because they know, they know a little bit about what I do, but then they'll say, well, can you just like give us some quick exercises? And I, I was in the, you know, almost like six people all like zoned in asking me like, so tell us what we can do or where should I tongue be? Or so you mean, um, you know, and they're just kind of going after and they're like, sorry, we should be paying you for your time. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, but I still think like just to watch videos on the internet is one thing to me. It's sort of like having a personal trainer, right? Like mm -hmm. I know the exercises to do in boot camp. I won't do them unless I'm in boot camp with other people doing them and someone saying, move to this station. So yeah. I think people might think like, I'll just go to the internet and I'll learn these five things or whatever. But you really need someone like coaching you through it. It's like, you know, what kind of results are you going to get if you have a one-on-one -on -one personal trainer? Yeah. I, I give you two booklets of like, you should do these push-ups, you should do this. Because you don't really know, am I really even do these push-ups right or not? Or, you know. Things yeah. to Plus, just meeting with someone, right? It's accountability, right? Just yeah. like the Weight Watchers or whatever. You got to show up every week. You know, uh oh, on Tuesday they're gonna weigh me. So mm -hmm. you got to, you know, extra. And it always sort of means more to people when you pay for something. Like you know, you get it free. It's like, oh, I can do it anytime. Whatever. You don't do it. Yeah, I know. I, you know, if my kids quarterback coach charges me $125 an hour you can bet that we'll be there for that hour absolutely totally. yeah we're not gonna not show up for that you know yeah I'm glad you brought that up with the uh the coach and the practicing and the accountability because uh that you know a lot of people think oh just close your mouth like why yeah. <laughs> why is that hard and there is a lot more to it. And I think some people, you know, they've got the motivation, the kind of internal drive to constantly check in and monitor. And I'm sure there are people who can figure this out, but you can even think about like when I would give the three of you guys all the same exercise, but each person would have their own unique struggles yes. with, you know, compensations or with where they're having issues. So just having someone to be able to give you feedback on the exercises, is is huge and so i mean i always kind of joke with people i'm like if it was easy i wouldn't have a job like my field wouldn't yeah. exist you know <laughs> absolutely, absolutely yeah um yeah well um i guess uh we can wrap it up unless you have anything else you want to share or add to your story i just appreciate you taking the time and being willing to you know put yourself on the internet and talk about all your well, myofunctional issues <laughs> Yeah, no, no, nothing else. Do you want to say anything to Sarah Dieter? No. Arden? Wow, they're extremely talkative today. That's guys, all right. You guys are <laughs> so like, we've had enough of that therapy. Star. You're not going to ever be a YouTube star. That's it. That's it. That's <laughs> <laughs> all they do right. is watch people on YouTube all day, Sarah, is constantly watching people. So. Oh, he is? Oh, gosh. Well, no, Arden does. You know, she watches these crazy sniper wolf and all these people and, you know. <laughs> she have her own There's business. a lot of stuff on YouTube. I mean, that's how a lot of people find me is by looking for videos on like, where should their tongue be? And do I have sleep apnea and stuff like that? So it's actually... You I'm, had the most because I found you very easily when I... Um, that's how, yeah, that's how I got you and it's a free assessment and then you met with us in two days and then we started our year of therapy. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate you taking the time. So, um, yeah, we'll just have to be in touch. I want to know more after we get off this. Um, I want to know more about what's going on with your, you know, next part uh, two, part two with Peter. Yeah, yeah. Part two. <laughs>